It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where we'll see which conference reigns supreme today. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Seattle Seahawks, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 25. It's a stadium known for its design, its noise, and a fan base so passionate. Brock, you know this firsthand. They've retired a jersey number for them. Welcome, everybody, to Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. And everybody, thanks so much for joining us. You picked a fun one to tune into. I'm Kate Scott, joined by former NFL quarterback Brock Heward. And we've got two quarterbacks here, Brock, who are known for playing a very exciting brand of football, not just throwing the rock, but taking it themselves, too. Yep, these are two of the guys who really epitomize the direction that this position's going in the modern NFL. Yep. Pocket passers, they'll have their place. They always will. But a lot of teams look to somebody like this as a default. A great passer, but someone who can also mix in plenty of rushing yards and keep that defense honest. Dustin Hopkins out, ready to send this away. And we're underway from Seattle. His return starts at the five. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. So out come the Seahawks for their first offensive possession. They'll be led out by the 12th year pro from West Virginia, Geno Smith. The NFL's comeback player of the year just two years ago, resurrecting a career and writing a script that I don't think anybody saw coming. Last year, another 3,600 yards and 20 touchdowns with an 8-7 record as a starter, but there's a lot of new. A new system, a new coordinator, and for Geno Smith, he tell you, a new head coach that, uh, well, he's got to create the same confidence and belief in that Pete Carroll certainly had in Geno. Can't wait to watch this script unfold. He finds him 16 yards and a new set of downs. To play running back in this league, well, you've got to have tremendous vision. We saw it twice. Once to find the lane upfield, and then to get to space and break off some extra yards. Got a man, coverage lost and complete. And he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. They strike for 23 yards. And it sets up Seattle with first down. You know what I like about that, Kate? I like that they're not coming out slow. They're willing to go with some looks here that will yield big yardage down the field instead of just settling for dinking and dunking the ball. They're set up at the 35 now. On first down, they'll run. And a couple of teammates combining there for the stop after just one yard. I think one thing you learn, Kate, when you transition from college to the NFL, not every run is going to be a big play. Some of them, well, they're just destined to end in a minimal gain, and some of them will set up that critical play action for later. They'll come to the line here, second and nine. Staying with Walker. And he'll be brought down here at the 23-yard line. They come through with a nice gain there. Gain of 10, first down. Ooh, I like that. I really like that execution to move the chains. Now that third down call that they had ready, well, they could stick it right back in their pocket for a later occasion. A new set of downs awaits them. Here's first and 10. Tight end in motion left. Smith to the air now. Hits his man on the out route. And he'll go down here at the 16. That is the epitome of staying on schedule. That kind of completion right there on first down. Well, it opens up the entirety of the playbook for second down. And the third and short in your back pocket, you can get even more aggressive and take that shot. Running for the marker on second. And he'll push this upfield and earn them a new set of downs. That right there, that will make the coaches happy. He didn't just get the first down, but got a healthy chunk of bonus yards afterwards. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Takes the handoff, now to throw. That one's incomplete in the end zone. First time this game they've looked to him. 
So now it'll be second and goal. QBs, well, they're a lot like the great shooters in the NBA. Hey, listen, sometimes you're going to miss. You just got to shake it off and keep shooting away. So after the incomplete pass, here's second and goal. They give it to him up the middle. And they take it across the goal line. Touchdown, Seattle! The Seahawks finish up an excellent opening series. Well, you couldn't ask for a better start to a game than that. The offense taking it all the way down the field and finishing with six. These opening drives, Kate, are such tone setters. It is why every offense loves to script their first 15 plays, right? Everybody knows what's coming. Allows you during the practice week to get into rhythm, but even better when you're that sharp, that crisp, and you finish off and get the early lead. Now it's Jason Myers on for the extra point. That one right down the middle. And they add one on to their first touchdown of the contest. Here's Myers now to handle the kickoff. Return coming from the six. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. So here are the Browns now, headed out for their first drive. Now we let out by a guy coming off a pair of shortened seasons. The former Pro Bowler now in his eighth year, Deshaun Watson. After winning the national title at Clemson, an early success at Houston, there's no question that Deshaun's career has been slowed by some injuries and other challenges. But when he is on the field at every level he's ever played, he's just got a calm. And that calm comes with the trusting of talent that he has in himself. He knows how to run, he knows how to throw, and when he's available, he's still a difference maker. You know, I'm not sure if he was hearing footsteps or just had a surprise break in concentration. So unusual to see one dropped unless there's a hit involved. Second and 10 now. Complete, it's Cooper. And they're gonna bring him down just beyond the 30 at the 31. Third and six for them to figure out now. Watson now. It's into the hands of Chubb. And he's up to the 35-yard line as they reel him in. It's plays like that, Kate, right wrong. Where I sit and judge a defense. I judge the awareness. I judge how well that coordinator's got him equipped to see what's going on on the field. And not just see it, but attack it. And they devoured that screen game on third down. The Browns looking to punt on fourth down, so on comes their southpaw, Corey Bohorquez, to handle it. And they bring him down to put a stop to that return. That one scored as a massive 67-yard effort. And that is where they'll start the next drive. Here's Smith. Cut by Lockett. And that tackle stops him after a solid game. That is a textbook first down completion. Sets up second and very manageable and creates space to take that shot downfield. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Out of the gun, they'll give it to him inside. And he's going to get this up to the 26 before being taken down. That goes as a four-yard pickup, and it gets him a first down. I don't know about you, Kate, but he sure made getting that first down look really easy. A lot easier than it's supposed to be for that defense. And I think they'll hear about it when they get to the sidelines. Running with Walker again. And he has enough room to gain about four. He'll expect more from himself on those type of plays, but there is nobody that's going to complain about that one. If you can do math, four plus four plus four equals a first down. Second and six coming up here. Design bootleg here. Finds Smith and Jigba. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. 
That's just great instincts. Go air it out on second down rather than just play conservative and run it. They hit a weak point in the coverage and don't need to worry about third down at all. First down, ball at the 36. Throwing is Smith. He keeps those feet in and makes the catch. He's just one of those guys, Kate. Even when he's not open, he's still a target thanks to that physicality and his ability to just play bully ball. They don't like forcing into coverage, but sometimes when you've got a bully like him that can create space, you just find a way to get him the ball. Second and three. Connects with Fate. And he's going to go down right along the midfield strike. That's good for seven yards. And the Seahawks will have a first down. When you see play action, do all you can to get your eyes to the tight end. Because that's their bread and butter. That play action gives him time off the line, helps chip a rusher, or even helps sell that fake. And then when he releases, he gets out, he gets some leverage. He gets to that edge before the defender can cover him. The Browns close in and take him down. And the big play drives them backwards. Second down coming up. Sometimes I wish everybody could feel what that feels like. <laughs> when you're a QB and you just feel the air in the pocket getting sucked out and you know there's no escape, it can be just one heck of a deflating feeling. Not for that defense who puts a sack on the board. All right, here we go. Second down. Trying again, following the set. Connection made to Smith and Jigba. And he's taken down directly on that 43-yard line. Yeah, these end cuts maybe aren't the hardest throws from a degree of difficulty, Kate. But it does take some courage as a quarterback to throw into congested spaces. But it can pay big dividends. All plays on the table here for third and three. Smith. Brought down a little short. No, actually, they do give him the 10-yard line. It's a 33-yard gain and a fresh set of downs. Yeah, I love that effort, adding as much as possible to that catch while earning the first down. That's called yards after catch, and it's what coaches want from all their pass catchers on the roster. And they've got themselves another first and 10. From the red zone now. This one's caught. And that play is brought to a halt. So they're going to say at the five yard line. They will not get another playoff. We're at the end of one. 7-0 is our score. More from Lumen Field in just a minute. Back now for the second quarter, and the Seahawks, they have got to look towards the end zone. They'll run now on second down. And he won't challenge for the goal line. The stop made at the four. They managed a single yard that time. They're going to have to solve third down and four. You know, Kate, I like to call these body blows. Body blows. you got to be committed to running the football. Even if it doesn't move the chains, I guarantee you that wear and tear will pay dividends later. From the gun on third down. And there's a man there. It's intercepted. Greg Newsom has it. And the Browns take over after forcing the first turnover of this ball game. Well, they were thinking at least a field goal on the drive if they couldn't reach the end zone, right? But the interception keeps them from even getting three out of this possession. You really hope at the end of this game you don't look back and go, shoulda, woulda, coulda. If we could have gotten some points out of that drive early, we wouldn't be in the situation we are in now. Second drive coming up for this Cleveland offense. 
And they haven't gotten their legs under them on offense just yet, Brock. Three plays and a punt on their opening drive. Offense ready to begin this drive. First and ten. Watson to throw it. Connection made to Judy. And he does quite a bit of damage before they finally take him down. You know, Ken, we often talk about flipping the field in special teams, right? A, a kick return, a good punt. Well, an explosive play like that does the exact same thing. Look at the difference in field position. By hitting on that shot, you've totally flipped the field and the tone of this drive. So as we all recover from that last play, it's first and ten near the red zone. Here's Watson to the air. Finds his man en route complete. And he's going to be taken down near the eight-yard line. Give him about 16 yards on that game, Brock, and it sets him up with first and goal. I may love watching a great thrower, but I love watching a well-done route too, Kate. Make that guy think you're trying to stack him, only to drop your hips and cut right inside. Some good work to help reset those chains. First down from the red zone. Into traffic, complete. And this one stopped at the three-yard line. You know, I often say there is a fine line between aggressiveness and carelessness. And when you throw into double coverage, well, it can go either way. That time, a tremendous catch by his receiver on the other end. It's second and goal. Throwing is Watson. It's caught. And he will score. It's a Cleveland touchdown. The Browns start to fight back with their first points of this game. David Njoku, the touchdown. Well, good luck stopping the big fella that close to the goal line, Brock. I've always thought that the distance right there is just made for tight ends to score touchdowns. Yeah, and it's not just the sport that you also love to cover in basketball. <laughs> it's all about matchups. You get near the red zone and into the end zone, matchups become critical. And when you got a dude like this that's a mismatch maker, you feed him. On comes Dustin Hopkins to try the extra point. That one splits the uprights, and we're all tied up. Hopkins has it on the tee and is ready to send it flying. Kickoff taken at the three. And a decent return ends as they bring him down inside the 30. The Seahawks start headed out, and we'll see Kenneth Walker. And the drive will start out with a first and 10. They are coming off their first interception of the game. This drive now a chance to rebuild some confidence. Tight end reels in the shallow throw. And he's got a decent gain before being brought down. Every once in a while, it's fine to be conservative on first down, especially when you get enough to stay on schedule and get a little something coming out of it, too. Second and six coming up here. Out of the shotgun, they'll give it to him inside. And he maybe got back to the line there, but no further. Looks like no gain on second down, and that leads us to third and six. These big D tackles in this league, they love weaponizing their size right in the middle of the field. It is so hard to clear lane against them. And once he got his paw on him, it was dead on arrival. Throw on third down. That one is incomplete. Couldn't hang on through the contact. Intended target there was Jackson Smith and Jigba. And that makes it fourth down. You know, that was almost a nice chunk play before he was able to recover and provide the hit that dislodges the football. You like to see that physical edge and scrappiness to contest any kind of shot plays deep. Fourth down, and on comes the punt team, and the kick's away. He fields it at the 18, and they bring him down to put a stop to that return. The Browns and quarterback Deshaun Watson gearing up for their next series. They threw it the whole way down the field on their last drive, and they welcome the same level of play on this series as well. Here's Watson. 
Short pass caught by his tight end. And this one gets to the 33-yard line before it stopped. That's what you call efficiency. Exactly what you're looking for in first down. Textbook. It sets up second and very manageable, and it creates that space if you want to take a shot downfield. After a good pickup, they've got second and four. Here's Chubb up the middle. And he'll pick up enough to move the chains. Well, looky here. You don't even have to worry now about a third down call as that run moves the sticks. Now that call you had ready, though, you can recycle it. Save it for later for that next third down coming. First down now, ball at the 39-yard line. Staying on the ground here with Chubb. And he pushes forward, but they don't get much there. Only two yards, and it brings up second and eight. From the 41. Bro reeled in by Najoku. And he made a bid for midfield there, but stopped on his own side at the 49. Give him nine on that play, and it's enough for the first. I'm sure, Coach, a play caller doesn't mind making the job a little bit easier. You know, play calling's a lot simpler and easier when you count on the offense to move the chains on those early downs. They'll run here on first down. And he won't salvage that. It's a loss on the play. Well, he was supposed to be the one who chipped away a few and got a new set of downs started right in rhythm. Instead, he's now forced to pick himself from behind the line thanks to a great effort defensively. Back to the line they go. It's second down. Watson. Short pass caught by his tight end. And this goes across midfield and into Seahawks territory. Quarterbacks will look for their tight end short in just about any situation. They take away the deeper options. Well, there's their consistent source of positive yardage, the trusty tight end. And the Seahawks added an extra DB here. Third down coming. To throw, here's Watson. And he just gets rid of this one, but unfortunately, that means fourth down coming up. So many coaches love third downs and they practice them so much, Kate. Why? because they're the money down in the NFL. Whether it's a close game or already out of hand, coaches know got to execute and convert on these third downs. Corey Bajorquez on the punt. He broke 50 on his first punt and looks to have done the same here. And this one gets out of bounds. It was pushing some distance towards the goal line, but gets out at the five. Now Seattle all set to go here on offense. They were only on the field for three plays their prior series, Brock. Let's see what changes they make to take over here. They give up the gut to Walker. And the plunge up the gut yields nothing there. Call it no gain on that run, and they face second and ten. When you rush the passer, it's kind of like tracking down a runner. That same pass, same athleticism comes to life. He looked pretty good hunting his prey right there. Second and ten, need to get some positive yardage here. Now Smith. It's caught Metcalf. He'll go down after pushing this up to the 29. It's a 23-yard pickup on the play. And it sets up Seattle with first down. I know the combine tries to test everything it possibly can physically, but I don't know how you test courage at the combine because there's nobody defending you. Nobody wants to hit you. But that was the epitome of courage to make that in cut and make the catch. We're at the two-minute warning now from Seattle. The Seahawks working here. They'll keep this drive moving and come to the line for first and ten. Shotgun snap, looking to throw. He finds the open man there, complete. And he takes it just inside the 40, down to the 39. Give him 32 on the play. And the Seahawks will have a first down. 
I think my favorite part was the magic he worked after the catch. The way he took the completion and made so much more out of it by adding all the extra yardage. He's got his man complete. And he's got it across the goal line for a touchdown. So, Brock, this offense starting to find its rhythm a bit as they finish things with a touchdown there to give them the lead. And the key word there that you said is finish because you want to have that mindset, even in early in the game, that field goals aren't going to cut it. So that's great work to make sure they finish with six points. Myers to add the PAT. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. Here's Myers now to handle the kickoff. Return coming from the six. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. Well, we've already seen some nice plays here, and we're going to see plenty more before this game ends. But you might be thinking, with plays like that, my guy's ratings should be better. Well, you're not alone. you got a chance to let the Madden ratings hotline know just what you're thinking. Give them a call. 1-844-MADDEN-1. And make your case for who should get a boost. And he's going to go down right along the midfield stripe. The Browns take the first of their three timeouts. And they can take a moment to try to build more momentum after getting that first. Only one play in, Brock, and this drive already to midfield. Watson looking to throw. Got a man. It's Njoku. And he's going to be drugged down, looks like, at that 37-yard line. Give him 13 on that play. And that gives the Browns a first. Kate, when you watch the combine, you'll watch guys try to make this throw. And without chemistry, it's so hard to execute. That was picture perfect. That's a QB and receiver on the same page because that route, that deep out to the field, that takes it just a different level. And they get to him as he was trying to make something happen. And they'll try to build on that big stop. My goodness, was that some kind of speed off the edge. There's only a handful of tackles in this league that have the lateral movement to stay in front of an end like that. And maybe time for this quarterback to start mixing up his cadence, his count, certainly making sure this defensive end can't get off the way that he has. Second and ten, need to get some positive yardage here. Watson now. That's in the hands of Moore. And he's short of the first after a mild game. Now a timeout's called. Cleveland using its second. And they still have one in their pocket for what's left of this half. So now here's third and five. Throwing now off play action. That's caught for the first. And he'll go down. Looks like they're marking him at the 11. Big gainer here as he picks up 20. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. You know, Kate, you'll find teams go to this crossing route concept sometimes a dozen times a game. And a lot of times it's for shorter yardage, but sometimes things break in the right coverage for a much bigger impact play just like that. Justin Hopkins is going to try this Browns field goal. A very short kick here from the right hand. And it is good. No problems there on the shorter attempt. And it's dropped back down now to a four-point game. In that close, in the red zone, you know they're upset. They couldn't finish the drive with the touchdown. It's only half the points, but at least there's something to show for the possession. 
Well, Brock, barring the touchback, this kickoff should run out the half, so better make that return good as it's away. And he opts not to bring this one out, so they're going to enjoy some good starting field position from the 30. And he takes a knee. We've reached halftime from Seattle. It's the Seahawks leading in front of the home crowd. Now we'll jump from coast to the east coast to our studios in Orlando. Jonathan Coachman standing by to bring us our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Kate, thanks very much. Back to you and Brock in a bit. But first, time for our EA Sports halftime report. It was a strong first half for the former Spartan, Kenneth Walker. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. As always, a hat tip to Coach for his hard work during the break as we're happy to welcome you all back for the start of our third quarter. Return coming from the six. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. The Cleveland offense headed out for this first series of the second half. They'll try to get that ground game established better than they did in the opening half, Bronx, if they can attack that deficit. Airing it out to start this drive. And that one is caught. Did he keep the feet in? Did he keep them in? Oh, they're saying he did not. Incomplete. That is normally a gimme for this offense, these short throws. But the defense, well, they had just enough influence on that play to force the incompletion. Couldn't connect on first. It's second down. They'll throw it. He had it for a moment, but a great defensive play to jar it loose. Incomplete. Tried getting it to Jerry Judy. So now it's going to be third and long. As a defense, you got to see the pass. you got to time up your hit, and you got to jar that ball loose. Not a lot of offensive players are hanging on the bat run through a well-placed hit. They're going to throw it on third and long. He'll dump this one off to his running back complete. And that's good yardage with a new set of downs. Year after year, the best offenses are multifaceted. It's not just the receivers or the tight ends that can make plays through the air. When you get running backs that can attack the middle of the field like that, man, is it difficult on the defense. New slated downs to approach here from the 40. Now give right side to Chubb. Shoves him off, and he's got room to go. And he's going to go down right along the midfield stripe. Well, that doesn't net a first down. You get yards like that in the run game, you will take it in the NFL. Let's see what they want to do here, partner. It's second and inches. Again, it's Chubb. Works the sideline inside the 35. They get 27 on the play. And that gives the Browns a first. That's certainly a spot where you could be more aggressive, Kate, if you wanted to take your shots. But some coaches, even the bolder ones, will take the safe play first when they get it from time to time. No third down required now. To the line we go. They're set first and 10. Watson to throw it. Judy there to grab it. Going to be taken down near the eight yard line. That one goes for 15, and now they're going to have first and goal. I love throwing on first down. And when you see a first down pass just like that, it's taking advantage of a matchup you plan for and you go out and execute. This offense in position now. It's first and goal. Try and punch it in. And they needed more than one defender there. Powerful runner stopped for just one yard. Hey, I get it on first and goal, right? A lot of teams like to be conservative and, and limit risk. Even if a run is stopped short, you still got two, sometimes three downs to play with. Second chance at six here. It's second and goal. Out of the gun, he'll look to throw. Two. 
So that, Brock, an important score here as they move out in front. This is the time of the game where your legs just get a little bit tired. But that was a determined-looking drive right there. They were not going to be denied, and they're able to score and take the lead. On his Hopkins for the extra point. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead. Hopkins has it on the tee and is ready to send it flying. That's going to be taken in at the eight. And that's where they'll begin the drive following the return. And on that last drive, Brock, he crossed a notable threshold in passing yards for the season. Always nice when you can reach one of those plateaus to look back on after the year's over. Drive starts out with a first and ten. Throwing off the play fake here. Bails out of the pocket quick. He's going to tuck it and run. And he'll get taken down after advancing this to the 37. They get an even 10 on that play. And it sets up Seattle with first down. You know, that's one of those little mental Rolodex plays. Right before the snap, you know if the read isn't there, that option isn't there, you can use your legs to make the adjustment and go get the first down. Off to Walker from the gun. And this is going to be a short carry that just reaches the 40. Give him a few yards on that run. It's second and seven. You know, they got some positive yards. That's a good thing. But too many plays like that, it just is too hard to pile together, get first downs against the better defenses in this league. Here's second and seven. Smith and Jigba there to grab it. And they're going to haul him down just shy of the 40. That play goes for 19 and a new set of downs. You want to become a quarterback's best friend? Do that. Turn a short little gain, a short little pass into some yards after catch, and that quarterback will find you again. First and 10 from the 41. Off the play fake, he's going to throw. Charbonnet with the catch. And he's brought down for a loss. Well, there was never a play in any playbook I ever saw designed for a lost yardage play when you throw the ball. But if there's any solace, at least it was first down. A couple more chances to make up for it. Everyone's prepped. It's second down now. Fakes the handoff. Now to throw. Got a man. Coverage lost him. Complete. And he'll go down. Looks like they're marking him at the 11. That one goes for 31 yards and a first down when all is said and done. From a great throw to a nice route and catch to moving the chains. There wasn't a whole lot not to like about that amazing play. What a spot for a big play, huh, Brock? It has him well into the red zone now with first and ten. Walker now from the gun. And he drives forward for a little, maybe to the seven. They made it three yards on the tote. It'll bring up second down. You know, not a ton of yards, but still showing that commitment to the ground game. The type of run that keeps the defense from loading up in coverage and focusing entirely on that passing game. To back carries here. And they take it across the goal line. Touchdown, Seattle! The Seahawks grab the lead on their first series of the half. 
It's what every player who scores a touchdown wants to do, Brock. He wants to get right back there and put another six on the board. I've never met an NFL player content with one end zone trip in a game. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, if you're content, you're not making it to this league. You get one, you're instantly thinking of another, and the fortunate few are able to actually deliver on it. Myers to add the PAT. That one right down the middle. And they'll continue adding to their lead. Here's Myers now to handle the kickoff. His return starts at the five. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. The Browns are being led back out there on offense by their quarterback. And this is some quality film review right here. Look at this. Couple of touchdowns. Good amount of yards, too. He's been moving them down the field like only he can. Putting together quite the game for himself in the process. They'll get this drive started. First and ten. Here's Watson to the air. Connection made to Judy. And he's brought down after a nice gain and a first down. Well, that is pretty darn impeccable timing between the two. They hit a curl route of that length. It takes great anticipation and precision by the quarterback and the receiver on the other end finishing it, doing his job. And the slated downs to approach here from the 40. Here's a give up the middle. And he runs into a wall there. Multiple defenders ready to stop him cold at the line. No gain there that time, and it's second and ten. You want to see the term read and react with a little video in the football dictionary? That's it. Second and ten. Need to get some positive yardage here. Throwing with a blitz on the way. Finding Judy. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy in midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. Good luck defending that short yardage slant. Just not going to happen. There's a reason. This is a go-to play for just about any quarterback in every situation. All plays on the table here for third and three. They're going play action. Along the sideline, he brings it in. They say he got the feet down, too. Excellent work. They gain 14 on the play. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. It was such a privilege for me to watch Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne in person in Indianapolis do their work. Daryl Jackson out in Seattle. They showed how great a deep out is as a chain-moving play. It's all about getting that leverage at the top of the route and then exploiting the leverage as that ball arrives on time downfield. Flushed out of the pocket. He's keeping it. It's a 21-yard gain. And that gives the Browns a first. As long as these are the results he's getting, they're going to be just fine with him calling his own number. He does such a good job of seeing the field and knowing when it's his time to take it himself. Still on the move, coming to the line for first and ten. Working inside the red zone. Defender arrives right as the ball does, and the hit knocks it free, incomplete. Ball and defender arrived at the exact same time there. And now it's second down. See the pass, time up your hit, and jar that ball loose. Not a lot of players are hanging on to a well-placed hit like that one. To throw, here's Watson. Escapes the... Oh, he was on the move, but so is the defense, and they take him down. And that pushes him back, third down, coming up. This is one of those situations where QB strength and ability to run can be a great blessing, but can also be a curse. We've seen him use his feet before. This guy can escape, and that's a blessing. But it can be a curse because sometimes you think you can get out of everything. And this defense just proved he couldn't.
So not an enviable spot here as they come up on third and very long. Throwing is Watson. And even on third down, he sees no choice other than to get rid of it. Not the play they wanted. It's going to be fourth down. That was a situation where he got the time in the pocket he needed. There just wasn't anyone open to throw it to. It got to the point he had two choices as that clock is going off in his head. Force a throw and risk a pick, or just get rid of it and cut your losses on the play. And that one is good. A little longer, but no problem at all. And that cuts the lead back down to a lone point. Well, that's why they spend all the time on the practice field during the week. That kind of operation. Perfect rhythm, perfect timing, and a two for two for this kicker. Things trimmed back down to a single point, Brock, as they send this off and away. Here's a return from the seven. And this drive will start inside the 25. The Seahawks returning their offense and this running back to the field. They'll try to emphasize what worked on their last drive, which ended Brock in a touchdown. On first down, they'll run. And he's going to bring it up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. That one goes for 17 yards and moves the chains. So we hit the end of the third quarter. It's the Seahawks with it, currently with a not-quite-so-comfortable lead. Only took him one play, partner, and they've already made it to that 40-yard line. Now Smith. He's on the move. Ooh, look at this. Here he goes. Well, this is in every quarterback's tool belt. Even the ones not regarded as the best movers and shakers. But, Kate, to play QB in the league today, you've got to be able to do this. If you've got nobody open, still get some positive yards with your legs. Second and six coming up here. Now an inside give to Walker. And he's tackled with markers down. This one should be on the defense. Easy call for the officials there. He was offsides at the snap, and that's going to cost him. Offense to the line for second down. They go play action here. Completed to lock it. And they'll get him down after he gets into the 48. Three yards there and enough to move the chains. You know, it sure seems like he knew exactly where he was going with that before the snap. That's a pre-snap decision that led to a post-snap first down. First and 10. Ball set up at the 48. Now he'll throw off the play fake. Bails out of the pocket quick. Now here he goes. And he evades any kind of trouble, but only a short gain to show for it after sliding down. That is quarterback play 101. Maybe not the first chapter of it, but man, is that important. Getting downfield, get what you can with your legs, then most importantly, protect yourself. Get down and don't take any extra contact. Here's an RPO, looking left, caught. And he's tackled after gaining a handful. Following that completion, medical staff headed out for an injured player. We'll see what the nature of his injury is. Short yardage situation here. It's third and two. Here's Smith. Complete beyond the marker. And he's tackled with the first down yardage. 
you're not going to last long in the National Football League if you don't convert a good chunk of your third downs. Nice find there to continue the series. Ball at the 33 for first down. Off the play fake, he's going to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's brought down. They're going to mark him at the 14. It goes as a gain of 19 yards. And the Seahawks will have a first down. They've run this 12-yard out route gate at the Combine, well, all the way back to last century when I had to throw it. In this throw, this is a big boy throw. This is a differentiator. Can you make that deep out throw on time, on rhythm, and accurately? Well, that was teaching tape right there. Offense set for a first and ten. He tosses right to the short side. Oh, no, he hits the sideline. An ill-fortune run loses yards. That's got to be so frustrating for the runner. You're fighting the good fight. He even ripped through a tackle to stay afloat. But the blocking can't buy you enough time or room to even get back to the line of scrimmage. All right, here we go. Second down. Out of the gun. They'll give it to him inside. And he found a little room to turn it into a nice gain down to the six. A solid eight-yard gain there, and now they're going to have third and two. So much to like about that run, Kate, particularly what he was able to get out of it. The defense, I think, feels a little fortunate they were able to track him down before an even bigger run and crossing that first down marker. Here he is to throw on third and two. Has it in close. And he's able to get it to the two before the stop. Four yards on the play, and that picks up a first and goal. That's what we call situational football. You spend all week working on your nickel passing game package to take advantage of third downs just like that. They'll break the huddle and come up on first and goal. Simple dive up the middle. In the middle holds. They don't get anything on the run. Call it no gain that time, and they'll have second and goal. You know, Kate, these are the situations in training camp that I love more than anything to watch. You learn so much about a football team in these goal-to-go situations. You know you got to protect that goal line, and the defense, well, they did the job on first down. More to come. Running for it again. And he barrels across for the touchdown. He would not be denied that close to the end zone, Brock. I think it might have taken five or six guys tackling him to keep him from diving across the line for six. Certainly a second effort touchdown, no question. The backs who become fan favorites, we've seen it through the generations, and they set the curve for their peers, are the ones who just fight through that stop. It will not be a denied of a touchdown. Myers to add the PAT. That one splits the uprights. And they'll continue adding to their lead. Here's Myers now to handle the kickoff. Here's a return from the seven. And he's brought down. The offense will come onto the field. The Browns getting their offense out there. They have a chance to tie this game back up, but they got to get this to the end zone first on a touchdown, and then again on a two-point try. And that's good yardage there with a new set of downs to boot. Now, don't think for a second they're going to slow down the tempo. Defense on their heels. And right now is the best chance to push that envelope and get aggressive. New set of downs for him at the 38. Back to the well again. And they'll take him down at the 43-yard line. Halfway there on first down. That brings up second and five. 
It's got to be so demoralizing as a defense when you go up against a running back who just keeps those legs churning like a piston in an engine. And that effort's contagious. This entire offense is getting a boost when he busts those tackles. Here's second and five. He's got the hook up to Cooper. And he'll be brought down a step or two shy in midfield. They're going to mark him at the 48. I'll tell you this, you don't want to make a living throwing into double coverage, but double coverage and still finding a way to beat the defense and haul it in. That's not a situation many players win, and a lot of quarterbacks willing to make that throw and trust their receiver to get it done. The handoff on third and short. Oh, what a stiff arm! And he's going to be brought down after reaching the 43. They come through with a nice gain of 10 and a first down. Win the early battle. Get a little leverage. Low man wins off the line, and that's all that was needed to ensure that first down right there. Let's see how they attack this first down, Brock, from the 43. Now they'll throw out of the gun. Got a man open. Complete. And he runs this to the 25 before being brought down. They'll get 18 yards there. And that's good for a Cleveland first down. <laughs> that is what elite offenses are all about. Why worry about three downs when you need only one? Move the chains in one play and keep driving that defense backwards. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning left for them. We've got first and ten. Here's Watson. Rifles it, and it's caught. And this one doesn't go far. So that brings us to the two-minute warning in Cleveland. Browns trail by eight. Second down now, seven to go. Watson. Got a man, it's Njoku. And he's brought down inside the 10 at the nine. That's a gain of 13, and it sets him up with first and goal. Nice to see that connection, that chemistry working between the two of them. Four downs now to get in. Here's first and goal. Running right with Chubb. And that play is brought to a halt. They're going to say at the five-yard line. Give him four on that play. So now they've got second and goal. They'll come away happy getting that type of output on most run plays. It's a sign. They're getting some good push up front, and this running back is seeing the lanes and paying them off. Throwing now. And he will score. It's a Cleveland touchdown. The Browns cut it to just two late in the game. Amari Cooper, the touchdown. So there's part one, Brock. They get the touchdown that they desperately needed. Now, you'd imagine, comes a try for two. Yeah, and this might be just as tough as to go get that touchdown they just did because, well, they work on two-point conversions, but they're difficult. This is also a must-have, though, Kate, if they want to try and force overtime. So now a big play coming from the Browns as they try for two. Now to throw. Look. And he's taken down. The defense maintains the two-point lead. That was the play they needed. Now got to hope your defense or special teams can come through and get you that football back. And the sooner the better, too, because time is not their friend. They always have the onside kick to bail them out, but after that, might be time for this D coordinator to creak up the aggression meter, and you know every one of these defenders will be attacking the ball. And he has it to the 42 before they make the stop. Needed to try it. We all get it, but didn't work. Still now have those three timeouts to fall back on. They did need to try it, but I think there is a school of thought of, hey, also kick it deep with those three timeouts. So now your defense can't give up a yard. Right now, you've really burdened your defense to get a quick stop, a quick stop, a quick stop, and make sure they do not give up any yardage to this opposing offense. Let's go defense. They'll head up first and 10 from the 42. Out of the shotgun, they'll give it to him inside. And they beat him to the edge. That run stopped back at the line. Oh, 
Second and ten, need to get some positive yardage here. Running with Walker again. He still has room inside the 30. And he has it down at the 26-yard line. Now a timeout's called. Cleveland using its second. And they'll have just one left to burn now. Set up now, first and ten. And they'll kneel it down. Now the Browns spend their final timeout. That's all they had, so the offense free to start running the clock down now. And they'll take a knee. There's still some time to bleed off the clock, but the important factor is that the defense is helpless to stop it. You could just run that clock down as far as you're able and take off every single second. Well, Brock, I think we're both thinking another Neil likely coming here on third down. And they'll kneel this one down. Nothing left to do now, Kate, but celebrate on one side and watch on hopelessly from the other. What a hard-fought effort to get to this spot, and now you can enjoy the victory. So several thousand 12th men and women cheering as the Seahawks win at home. And it was a game for fans of high-scoring football, wasn't it? I know Brock was enjoying seeing both of these offenses work, and really not a lot to dislike from either group. Just one side working at a slightly better clip than the other. That was the difference in the win. So for Brock Heward, everyone here on our great crew, I'm Kate Scott, and this has been the NFL on EA Sports. The Seahawks winners, as we say so long from Seattle.